Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebane. So at the beginning of the year, I made a super cut of all of our KonMari or Stash videos from last year because I thought that you guys would probably enjoy seeing just how to fold everything because we did two videos last year and the biggest complaint people had was that I talked too much and I'm probably talking too much now. But what we did is in the video description down below, we've got time codes for if you wanna learn how to film or fold that size so you can get your stash organized. You can just look at that and go straight to that section. I figure we didn't get it out right away because I was having a baby and it was a little crazy. But uh, unfortunately, we're all gonna be spending a little bit more time in our homes and maybe now's a good time to work on cleaning up your stash. So we decided we would put this out now. It is a super cut of all of our KonMari or stash folding techniques. This is how I fold my fabric in order to get it to where I can see everything very clearly, know what I have, but have it nice and organized. So check it out. If you need to watch the time codes down below so that you know exactly where you wanna get for folding that size of fabric or that type of fabric and check it out. I hope you enjoy it. Like and subscribe and enjoy. All right, so I'm going to start with my fat eighth drawer. All right, so what I do is I've got my selvage end down here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold that in half so that the end that was at that selvage fold, what you do when you're cutting these is you'll cut your nine by 40 inch piece and then you're going to slice it off at the top and that will give you your fat eighth instead of a just plain quarter yard of fabric. So I fold that cut edge down even with my selvage. Then I'm gonna fold it in half again, and I'm going to stop just shy of where that fold is because I don't want the raw edges to be poking out through there. That way it looks a little neater when you stash it. Then I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna fold it in half so that way I have nice folded edges on the sides and then I have all my raw edges together and I have my folded edge there. All right, so now we're gonna move on to our fat quarters. They are folded pretty much the same way, just they're wider. All right, so I've got this wrong side up because I always wanna fold the right side coming in. So I've got my selvage here at the bottom and then my cut edge is here at the top. I'm gonna to fold that in half, smooth it out. And just like before, I'm gonna fold it in half again. And I'm gonna make sure that those raw edges are just inside where this fold is. That way when I fold it in, I'm not gonna have any raw edges. Now you kind of have to know where the center is. You can always use your measuring mat to do this. You can line this up with zero and this up with 18, and then you know you have to fold into the nine inch mark. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it the outside to the center and then do that again. So now your raw edges are meeting here in the center. And then when we fold it in half again, now you no longer have any raw edges. It's all folded in and tucked inside. All right, let's move on. So usually I store my half yards in the little bins as well. So again, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fold this in half. I'm folding that selvage edge down to the folded edge. And in this one, I'm making sure that my selvage is just a little bit before that folded edge. That way that selvage is gonna be tucked on the inside of our fold and it won't be too much of a mess hanging out on the side. It'll just look really neat. So I'm gonna fold it in half again. And again, I'm stopping just before where that folded edge is. Again, so we have nice neat folds on the outside. Then I'm gonna fold those raw edges from that half yard into the center on both sides and then fold it in half one more time. And then we have our half yard fold, which looks really neat. This one, I have to say, is my favorite. This is how I store my one yard cuts of fabric. All right, so this fold is a little bit different than what we've been doing before, but the concept is still very similar. So I'm gonna start, I've got my whole one yard cut here. And what I'm first going to do is I'm going to bring my edges together from the cut end. So the one yard to 36 inches, I folded that in half. So now I've got my raw edges over here and a fold here, a fold up top, and then of course my salvage on the bottom. Now I wanna get this a little bit smaller. I like to have it be longer like this 
in, in the big basket. You could fold it the exact same where I had been folding it and it would just be a fatter piece to stuff in. You could use smaller bins, but I like to have fewer folds on my yardage that we have less to iron out when I go to use it. Because I'm gonna use this for bigger, more substantial projects, whereas the little ones, you know, I just need a little bit here and there. So instead of folding it down like I had been doing, I instead am going to fold it in half vertically. So now we've got a piece that's about nine inches wide here by 20 inches long. So now I can take my salvage edge and fold it up to the folded edge here. Again, stopping that salvage just a little bit before we get to that fold so it's gonna be tucked inside when it's all done. Now I like to fold it in half again. So I've got all my folds and my salvages here. And then I've got a single fold up here. And then I can just slide it right in the bin. You could get fancy and you could fold it in like this. So you would fold your salvage edge into the center and then into the center. And then like that, you could do that as well. And then it looks a little bit neater where you have the edges here and then just a single edge. All right, so in this video, we're gonna address some of the questions that came up again and again in the stash for the first one on Kamari in your stash. So one of the first ones was, what do I do when I buy a fat quarter bundle and they're all together? And the answer is, I leave it alone and I don't touch it. I should probably also tell you, I do have one exception to my rule for just keeping these all together. If you have a designer that you love and you tend to keep buying fat quarters of their stuff like Alison Glass or Tula, and it's a designer where from line after line after line, they kind of use the same color palette and you can easily mix and match those. Those I would store in bins all vertically and I would layer them by color order in that case, because especially like with an Allison Glass or a Tula, you can easily pull from line to line to line and mix and match and have a lot of fun and have a really great quilt at the end. So in that case, I would have a separate bin for that designer if you have one that you really obsess over. The second question I got a lot was, what happens when you use something for applique and you've got pieces cut out of it? How do you fold that? And the answer is exactly like I do the other fat quarters, just I kind of tuck in the part that's missing. So we made, my daughter and I made a poop emoji rainbow pillow yesterday because she loves the poop emoji and rainbows because she's four and both of those things are awesome. And so this is what's left of that. So what I did is I folded it in half just like the others. And then I'm gonna fold it in half again, making sure that my um, salvage is just on the inside. And what I might wanna do if I'm really gonna plan to store this long-term is I've still got some feasible web on here, so I might wanna cut that off just so that it folds a little nicer, but that's up to you. So I'm gonna fold this in half and then I'm gonna fold it in on itself and then in on itself again and then in half. And then I've got the same nice, neat fat quarter just as we did where all the raw edges are tucked on the inside, but here's the big difference. I would store this separately than all my other fat quarters. That way I know that this bin of fat quarters is, has got stuff missing from it. So that way if I'm pulling from a fat quarter pattern where I need every single inch of the fat quarter, I don't get my heart set on this fabric because I'm not gonna be able to use all of it and I'm gonna have to get scrappier and grab a few extra. So the other one is what do you do with extra large cuts? This is about a three yard cut right here. And does it work? And the answer is yes, but you need to fold it down a little special. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna fold it until it is about that nine inches wide because that's what I wanna start with. So I'm gonna take my ruler. Let's see, I'm a little bit too wide here. I'm at 22 inches, so I need to fold that down kind of judiciously. It's easiest if you have a mat to do this, but you can also do it with a ruler. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my 18 inch mark measured there. And the reason why I'm folding it to nine inches wide is because if you had a 36 inch one yard cut of fabric and you fold it in quarters like we did originally, that's gonna be nine inches. So that's what I wanna get to here. So I'm gonna fold that so that it's nice and even and that it is now 18 inches wide. And then I'm gonna fold this back like this. So that way my raw edge is now tucked in the center here. And now I can again 
fold this in half. And so now I've got a piece that's nine inches by width of fabric, like what we had when we were doing the one yard cut, just there's a few more folds on the inside here. So now I can take it like we did before, and I can either fold it in half to the center like this twice, and then fold it in half, and then it's gonna sit up right on its own here. Smush it down a little more. Now it sits up real nice. You would wanna put it in a basket. It's wanting to have a little bit of spread, but you could still have larger cuts here. Again, this one's about three yards and it is not overwhelming at all. Um, it is about a little less than an inch wide. So if you had larger fabric than this, you absolutely could stuff a bunch of backings all together and that could be your backing bin and have everything together. So the other question I got is, does this work with garment fabric? And the answer is yes. And I thought the most fun garment fabric I have right now is this uh, sequin, if you've seen the mermaid one where it kind of goes in both directions. I got this to do a sweatshirt for my daughter. And then I also have some sweatshirt fleece. And so I'm gonna store these together um, in their bin so that way I know that these are supposed to be together in, in the end when I finally get around to making them. And then also I'm gonna put the pattern with them as well so that way I don't forget it. So what I'm gonna do first, and for one like this, you maybe would wanna store it um, with the wrong side out just because you don't wanna damage any of the sequins. But I'm going to first get my selvages together just like I would any other. And of course, this is going to be longer. And so I got a yard of this. So I'm gonna fold it the exact same way I did the others, where I'm gonna fold it in half first, and then in half again. Again, making sure that those raw edges are just inside. Now, the difference here is it's just gonna stick off a little bit higher. So if I fold this either in half and then in half, like I did originally. It's not gonna stand up on its own just now because it's really floppy material. It's gonna to need to be in a bin with other things. Or you can do it where you're folding into the center like this and then over, that works too. And then you've got your nice sequin fabric. It looks cute. It fills it all out. And then I can do the exact same thing with a sweatshirt fleece. But again, it's just a little taller. So here's the quilting cotton, which is 40 inches wide. And here is the 60 inches wide. So it's just an inch or so taller, but it takes up the same space width wise. So you can still use those same baskets that I showed you from Target. We'll link all those again down below. But again, you can use shoe boxes too. You don't need to get special baskets for this. But what I would do here is I would store these guys together. I would slide my pattern right in the center of those so that way I know exactly what I wanna use it for. And then I, I won't forget what I intended this to be for. So this is the best example because I've already cut everything that goes in here. But I'm gonna do a little Milo pony quilt with my daughter, she is obsessed. And so I've already cut up all my square, or triangles in this case, of it, of all the little ponies. I do have some sashing that I've cut in here as well. And then a panel that's going to be the center. So I've got everything I need in here. And if I hadn't already cut it, it would be in here as yardage. And that way I know this all belongs together. I can see it, I know what's in it, and I'm able to easily grab it out when I need it. And so these just sit um, actually under the counter at our shop. But if you've got like a walk-in closet, these could sit in there as well and you can see them. They're really easy to pull them out when you need them. And since you have the plastic in it, it's not like you're going to be damaging your fabric by stacking them up. When you're shopping for these, um, I just go usually to Michael's and I get the clear scrapbook bins. What you want is the interior size to be at least 12 and a half inches. That way you can also store your quilt blocks in here while you're working on a quilt. So you can have all your pieces in here and your completed blocks. And then when you're getting ready to go sew somewhere else, you can just grab the whole bin and go and you won't have forgotten anything. So I do that with everything because it's a lot easier to keep it organized. Thanks so much for following along and until next time, happy quilting.